So the word polynomial is made up of the words poly, which means many. Okay. Write this down. And nomial, which means um, term. These are ancient, these are Greek words, by the way. A term, T-E-R-M. So literally it means many terms. Okay. Uh, in the table below, we're going to discuss more specifically what makes a, something uh, a polynomial and how to describe a polynomial. So basically, a polynomial is an expression. with one or more algebraic terms. Uh, a polynomial can include a constant. So that's one type of thing. Can include constants, just plain old numbers. Variables. And a whole number. and whole number exponents. Whole number exponents. So I'm going to continue highlighting this. So it could be a number, a variable, just a plain old variable. And whole number exponents. We'll get into those in a minute. So the one thing you can't have in a polynomial, it's division by a variable. Because actually then you would have a negative exponent. So in parentheses here, just put negative exponent. So you can't have negative exponents on your variables, or you can't have a variable in the denominator. OK? Um, so we, we have a definition, right? This is what a, a polynomial is, guys. Um, let's just kind of go through these and decide A through E. Is it a polynomial check or not a polynomial? X, okay, so 12X to the negative three. Polynomial or not a polynomial? No, we got negative exponent. So we would put this on the column for no-nos. All right. So the next one, 6xy to the fifth minus 2x cubed plus 4. Yeah. Everything there is fine. We've got constants. That's fine. we got positive exponents. we got variables. All of that's part of a polynomial. So this would be a check, and that would go here. Okay. Negative uh, 3x plus x over y minus 11y. No. Yeah, that's a no. Definitely, this part's a no-no. So this is 
variable dividing by a variable. Divide by variable, let's say. Which means that you have a negative exponent. So that would go here with, okay. So now we have D, 5X squared minus 1.2X plus 3. Yeah. Everything there seems okay. We got coefficients, which are fine, even if they're decimal. All the exponents are positive integers. Or positive, yeah. And yeah, a constant. Yep. D is fine. Check there. 9 plus x all over 2. Let's see, are we dividing by a variable? We're dividing by 2, though. Remember, another way to write this is 9 halves over plus x over 2, which is actually, um, what would that be? 4 and 1 half plus 1 half x, right? It just kind of simplified, simplified. And all of that's OK. So I know it looks kind of weird. We're dividing by something. But yes, this is a polynomial. This is a check. So these are all things that are polynomials and aren't. OK? Any questions? So your typical polynomial looks like b and d, by the way. Just a string of terms linked together by pluses and minuses um, that have, some have variables, some have don't, some don't, some have exponents, some don't, okay? But they're all linked together. Okay, let's talk about the degree of a polynomial. So that's kind of a big deal, and let's learn what that's all about. So the degree of a polynomial is the largest, write the word largest, exponent of any term in the polynomial. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at your polynomial, look at every single term, and you're going to look for which variable has the largest exponent. That's going to be the degree of that polynomial. Think of it as like the most powerful po term in the polynomial, the one that has all the, all the power there. Uh, the standard form for writing a polynomial is to put the terms in de descending order based on the degree. Of the term. Okay. So... Let's just highlight this. Standard form for writing a polynomial is to put the terms in descending order from largest down to the smallest or, or no. Um, so we're going to practice this in a little bit. In this form, the coefficient of the first term is called the leading coefficient. Leading coefficient. Okay, so this is going to be the leading coefficient, okay? So this is how it works. I think it makes more sense when we see one actually with all, all the bells and whistles here. So let's take a look at this, this one here that we're about to do. All right. So, so 
based on the definitions above and your knowledge of expressions, label the parts of the polynomial. So we're going to put in all the different parts of this polynomial, okay? So first of all, let's start with this 2. Do you see it's the largest exponent? The exponents are 2, 1, and 0. 2, 1, and 0. This would be the degree. of the polynomial. So this is a second degree polynomial. Later on, we're going to call these quadratic. OK? Now, the coefficient in front of that one is 3. This is the leading coefficient. This is the leading coefficient. The coefficient in front of the, the, the first term, because you have it in standard form, is the leading coefficient. Okay. And then this is broken up into three terms. Right? We broke it up into three parts broken up by pluses and minuses. Now, what do we just call a number by itself? This starts with a C. Constant. So we already knew that one. So these are the different parts of a polynomial we need to know. All right. So here's what we're going to do next, guys. Um, we're going to rewrite these polynomials in standard form. In standard form. Then list the degree of the polynomial. Okay. So right now they're jumbled up. They're not in standard form. Okay. But we can easily easily enough rewrite them. So let's start with this one. Look at your three terms. What's the degree of this polynomial? Five, we got a, the degree for this term right here is zero. The degree for this term is five. The degree for this term is two. Five is the largest one. So we're gonna start with that one, four X to the five. Okay, and then we're going to go in order. So after 4x to the 5, we're going to write plus the next one, 7x squared. And then plus 15. Now we have this in standard form. And what's the degree for the whole polynomial? 5. It's always the degree of the largest exponent. Okay. So, any questions on that? Let's try that on the next one. Number two, here we go. All right, guys. So, which term do we write first? 2x to the fourth. And then followed by plus 5x to the third, since it's positive, minus 10x, and minus 13. Negative 13s are constant. OK? And it looks like our degree for this polynomial is 4, the fourth degree polynomial. And you may be wondering, OK, yes. Hmm? Oh. oh, no, they don't. This is x to the 1, right? This is x to the, what? how much is x to the 0? 
one. So technically the degree of, of a constant is zero because it's, it's times x to the zero. And, but we don't usually put x to the zero, right? Because it's one. So yeah, that's a tricky one. So fourth degree, third degree, one degree, zero degree. That's a good question though. And you may be wondering, one of the reasons we make a big deal about these degrees of the polynomial. Say we had an equation, you know, this, equa this thing equals 17, say, and we wanted to solve it. Well, way back when, some very brilliant mathematicians figured out that the degree of a polynomial tells you how many possible solutions it has. So guess how many possible solutions are there to an equation for this? Four. There's four possible answers that would work for this. How many possible answers are there for this one? Five. five. There's five possible solutions if this was an equation, if it was like equal to two and we were to solve it, there's five possible answers that would work there. Okay, so that's called the fundamental theorem of algebra. And, um, you know, you'll work with it in algebra too. Here, we're just going to learn the basics and you guys will move much faster with it later on. All right. Any questions? Let's continue. Okay, so more vocabulary. We like to classify these things, and we're going to throw in all kinds of ways to classify them. Um, a polynomial is classified by the number of terms. It has in its most simplest form. Okay, say you have one term. It's a monomial. Mono meaning one. So let's just put 3x. That's a monomial, just one term. Okay. If you have two terms, it's called a binomial, like a bicycle. And that's something like negative 2x plus 3. We could square it, why not? Plus three. That means there's two possible solutions, right? Second degree. All right. Uh, three terms would be called a trinomial. And let's just say this is, um, let's say x cubed plus 7x squared minus 3x. One, two, three terms. Okay. Any questions, guys? So we got monomials, trinomials, minom monomials, binomials, trinomials. Um, things that are squared if, if it's, if the degree is two, we're going to call it quadratic. Um, quadratic. If it's to the third power, we're going to call it cubic. So this is a cubic polynomial or a cubic trinomial because it's to the third power. Hmm? Oh, this one? Quadratic binomial, and this is a anything to the one power, right? No variable on the exponent. That's linear because it would graph a line, and that's linear, and that's a linear monomial, I guess you would say. Okay, so here we go. Let's see. Let's look at this one. We're going to determine if each expression is a polynomial. If so. We're going to write down the degree and the classification. So the first one, yes. yes, it's a polynomial. So the degree is two. So we'll say it's also quadratic then. And 
and the classification would be one, two, three terms. It's a trinomial. All right. How about the next one? No. Nope. That's a no. So just leave it. How about this one? Yes. Yes. That's a yes. The degree is, what's the degree on this one? One, one right? Remember, we can always put a to the one power there. To the one power. So that's a, the degree is one. We say it's linear then. And it's a monomial. How about this one? 18, just the number 18. Yes, yes that's another yes. The degree is zero. And if you're wondering why is, if you're still like, why is that zero? I can always add on x to the zero here, right? I can always add on x to the zero because that's just one. And one times 18 stays 18. So that's why its degree is zero. And this is just a constant. And it's a monomial again. How about the last one? Yeah. Nope. Again, we got that there. Okay. Huh? Oh, I should have put no. No. Yes. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, so the last thing we want to do is introduce you to some algebra tiles and then answer a couple questions, okay? So let's take a look. So algebra tiles can be helpful in visualizing and working with polynomials. In three through four, list the polynomial representation by tiles or sketch the model for the given polynomial using algebra tiles. Okay. So algebra tiles are used to represent uh, alg um, polynomials, okay? So let's see what we have. We have one, two, three of these big squares. What does each square represent? X squared. X, squared, x to the second power. So we have 3x squared, okay? So those three together gave us 3x squared. Now, these bars, we have some that are negative x and one that's a positive x. They combine to cancel out. If, if you have a pair of one negative, one positive, they would cancel each other. They're opposites, so they make a zero. So it'd be minus x or negative 1x. Let's just put minus x. Okay. And same thing here. We have unit tiles. We have one, one, two, three, four positives, two negatives. So we can cancel a couple, right? These cancel and these cancel. Plus two. It's been a long day. Okay, 3x squared minus x plus 2. All right. So now, let's do this next one. Here's the polynomial. Let's make, let's represent it with um, algebra tiles because this is going to be part of your assignment, guys. Yeah, how many of these do we have? Two. two. So we would have two of these big squares and each, yeah. So true, draw two of these big squares and so there's negative two X. My phone's been blowing up. One single X and that's usually a bar. So just draw a bar, a rectangle. 
and that's positive, so it's just x. And then how do we represent negative 3? Minus 1 3 times. Minus 1. Minus 1. Minus 1. Okay? So we just represented that with algebra tiles. All right. Let's see if we learn this stuff. A couple of... Um, Comprehension check questions. Oh, I used to have a student named Mateo in, in a class like this a couple years ago. Mateo wrote a binomial on the board. Label each statement as true or false. Mateo's expression must have a degree of two. It does. It, yeah, it's a false because it doesn't have to. Mateo's expression must have a coefficient of two. Mattel's expression must have two terms. Yeah, it's a binomial. So binomial implies two terms. Okay. Uh, okay, so these are always, sometimes, or never questions. So let's see the blank. It's either always, sometimes, or never. A polynomial will always, sometimes, or never include an exponent. Sometimes. Yeah, if you have a constant, just a number, it has no exponent, or have a variable with exponents one, it won't show the exponent. Okay, a polynomial will always, sometimes, or never include a division by a variable. That's a never. Oh, hold on. A polynomial will always, sometimes, or never have more than one term. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Um, yeah, when you do these always, sometimes, or never, when I was taking a class for um, taking um, the SAT, you used to have to take that to go to college. They said these always, sometimes, or never if you weren't sure, just go with sometimes because it's more likely to be a sometimes than a never or always. Um, not necessarily. It depends on the universities. But if you're going to UCs or a lot of the big, like Stanford doesn't even accept, require them anymore. So it's, yeah, it's a big test you, you would have to take. Um, OK, guys. So this is the notes. Um, let's talk about the assignments. The assignments are on IXL, I believe. Yes. 